Now it's time for What's Hot. And that's when we talk about stories that has everybody chattering. Yes, Yolanda White, kind enough to come in on the 4th of July holiday to talk about these topics with us. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, topic number one, a new trend across America. There are more single dads than ever hmm. heading households. A record 8% of households uh, led <laughs> by single dads. There were 2.6 million households led by a single father in 2011. Today, about two-thirds of households with kids are led by a married couple. Good to hear that last number, two-thirds yes. of households have a, a married couple. Two parents. But 8% just a dad. I think it's pretty interesting that um, it's not so much that dads are stepping up out of the kindness of their hearts and compassion for their children, but laws are making it easier for many fathers to have their kids get custody of their kids. And I think that's a good thing. Um, I don't know whether to celebrate a whole lot yet. I think 8% was the number mm -hmm. that I heard. and so. Keep stepping up is what I would encourage single dads to do. And responsibility is responsibility. Whether it, whether it's a mother or a father, a child needs a responsible parent. Yeah. It, is, is society making it a little more acceptable for dad to be the leader of the, of the household? Sometimes in divorces in the past, mm -hmm. it's always been the natural inclination of well, the kids need to be with their mother. Mm. Has, some, I, has something shifted in society? I think society um, in, in itself has shifted, is that it's, it's acceptable for a dad to have his, have his child. You look at some of the movies that are out and some of the, the pop culture signs is that, yeah, dads can be effective raising children. Okay. All right, well, we have some more coming up. Uh, airline frequency? Yep, we're gonna talk about frequent flyer miles for your pets. <laughs> How your pooch can rack up free airline miles. It is possible. Well, just like Brian Goddard's forecast, it's more of what's hot. Again, we're joined by Yolanda White for the holiday special today. You know, the 4th of July fireworks shows of today are much, much different than they were, say, 20 years ago. The pyrotechnics of the days past were slower and fueled by bigger explosions. Well, now shows tend to be more packed with smaller fireworks. It's largely because we've moved closer together. Have you really noticed a difference? Have you? I have. It seems kind of pitiful, the fireworks we have compared to 20 Aww. years ago. I lived in Milwaukee for over 20 years and used to really dream of going down to the lake and seeing the fireworks. And it seemed to have lasted for a lot longer than they last now. So it's a little disappointing, but I think we put money where we wanted to go. And right now we're not um, putting money to show pride in being independent. Well, you know what? I, this is just a little quick factoid. Every minute of a show takes mm -hmm. two hours of preparation. So put that into... Yeah, then and then preparation costs money. So, yes. you know, as communities have okay. less money to spend on this, they need to get smaller, tighter shows. Were you at the lakefront last night? Did you get down to see any of that? No, I saw, I saw only on the, on the news, okay. which was very little, but... It's you didn't see much. <laughs> you couldn't see much at all. But it's nice that, that it's still happening. Hopefully mm -hmm. tonight will be a better night. I had a great spot on the lakefront last night. Uh -huh. The first three, four minutes were really cool because we were right underneath them. Mm -hmm. And then it was just... Were you right over there by the, where the barges were? We were on one of those rock, uh, lined rock yeah. walkways out into the lake. So we okay. had a perfect spot for it. And then the smoke came and then the fog came in. What was really interesting was even when you couldn't see the fireworks, mm -hmm. people still just sat around in silence looking in up at the sky. Had it. Ho hoping. Yeah. They were just hoping <laughs> something that something clear, was right? going to happen. Yeah. It wasn't happening. <laughs> All right, last topic today. Pets. Pets can now rack up frequent flyer miles. Pets that travel on a Virgin Australia flight can get miles for their owners that can be used for discounts on future flights. This is Australia's first frequent flyer program for pets. Virgin Atlantic launched its Flying Paws scheme in 2005. I don't think this has come to Virgin America yet. No. Which is uh, what they do here in the States. And I, sh I, for one, hope it doesn't come to America. <laughs> I think we have to remember, and I know there are people who really love their animals, and some of them only have that animal as a companion, but it's not human. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an animal. And I think we were talking earlier that babies don't rack up frequent flyer points, so I don't know why a dog or a well, cat would. If you bought a baby a seat, though, the baby would, would get the baby? points. Would they? Yeah, sure. Okay. But Yolanda, you know, I, you know I, I understand where you're coming from. But you still have to pay just as pay the it. same amount as you would for a baby right. or a person for the dog. Let them get a doggy treat in a couple of miles. I don't really want to be on a plane with a dog. Oh, Air, no, you know, the airlines are getting so stingy with giving stuff away. You don't even get peanuts anymore. I'll take anything we can get from an airline these days. <laughs>
All right. On that note, we'll take a quick break. Thanks for coming in on the 4th. We'll be Thank right you. back.